guys, I'm Makili. Hi, I'm Byron. I'm Carl. And I'm Joanne. Today's episode, we'll be looking into one of Australia's first serial killers, Frederick Bailey Deeming. But that's not all he's known for. He is also one of the suspects for the identity of Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper. For those at your home who haven't heard of Jack the Ripper, he was a serial killer from the 1800s whose victims was mainly women. The identity of Jack the Ripper is still unsolved to this day, mm. and it's one of the biggest mysteries of all time. So do you know how many people he killed? Well, there's only five confirmed murders by Jack the Ripper. However, there could be way more. These murders are known as the Canonical Five. Jack the Ripper was known to talk police with letters detailing his crimes. But the identity of Jack the Ripper, people have suspected butchers, businessmen, even royal princes. But today, we'll be looking at one man in particular, and that man is Frederick Bailey Deeming. Mm. And luckily, we'll be talking to Jeff Crawford today about this theory. Wow, I'm not sure I really believe that. How does uh, Jack the Ripper, an Englishman, connect up with an Australian dude, Frederick Bailey Deeming? Well, let me tell you and the viewers at home the story of Frederick Bailey Deeming. The story begins with some tenants who went to do a house inspection on 57 Andrew Street, Windsor, which still exists to this day. One prospective tenant complained that there was a disgusting smell coming from the fireplace. And when they opened it up, they found the body of Emily Martha, Deeming's wife. She was gruesomely squashed under the fireplace after being killed by her husband. And following this discovery, police began hunting for this man. He ended up becoming one of Australia's most hated people. And tracking his story, they found that he had been in Rainhill, England for some time. And prior to his marriage with Emily, under a different name, he had married and had children with another English woman, whom he had also killed in the same way. He was known as Mad Fred in his childhood, was obsessed with morality, and after his mother's passing, believed that her ghost would tell him at 2 p.m. every day to kill. He was also known for luring women in with jewelry that he had stolen. Because of the style of his murder, people theorized that Jack the Ripper and Frederick Bailey Deeming were the same person. And luckily, we'll be interviewing Jeff Crawford on this later. Jack the Ripper or not, I don't want to mess with this guy's spirit. I don't want to be the next victim. Actually, some men have felt strangulation on Hosier Lane, which some people believe to be the ghost of Frederick Bailey Deeming. Wow. wow. And that's where we'll be going ghost hunting later. We want to be ghost hunting there, jeez. Mm. Well, Byron, <laughs> could you tell the viewers how we figured out who was going today? Yeah, definitely. Can I tell you guys about one of the best moments in Victorian history? Mm. Go ahead. So in the 1800s, before TV and Netflix, people used to dress up in costumes and go in the street and scare people. It was called ghost hoaxing, and it was much beloved until one night, a boy was walking through a cemetery and he got the fright of his life by a ghost hoaxer. After that, the police decided to shoot anybody on site who was ghost hoaxing. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> serious stuff, right? Wow. Earlier today, we ghost hoaxed some of the crew. Whoever got the best reaction is going to Hosier Lane tonight. You guys want to see what happens? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. So my game plan for today is, as you can see, I've dressed up like the girl from the ring. I found a dingy alleyway. I'm gonna hide behind one of the pillars, scare people that walk past, so good luck to me. What the? Yay! Seriously, don't do that. Okay. Oh, that's not very I can't let you I know the poor food. So Byron, what's your game plan for today? I think my game plan is just gonna be be as scary as possible. Sorry, I got um, yeah, just be as scary as possible. I've been told I'm like naturally a pretty intimidating person, so I don't think this is going to be too hard, uh, especially compared to the other hosts. Yeah, I think I got this one in the bag. What are your experiences being written to the license? Oh yeah, I did a lot of the pre-production stuff, so I mainly wrote um, three episodes. Oh, and... oh. oh hey Byron, how are you, man? Oh, I'm, I'm good, brother. Yeah. Jesus, you...
My game plan is basically to grab people's ankles as they sit on this bench and try to give them a little scare. Yeah, Byron already tried it. I'm sorry. Carl, so what is your game plan? The scariest thing of all. Real world problems. Did you know the Great Barrier Reef's dying? Did you know we're, we're, we're 10 years away from catastrophic climate change? Do you know if your friends really like you? Did you know one in 10 people are psychopaths? Are you scared at all? No, it's okay, but you get him next time. Well, Joanne, looks like we won. Yeah, I don't know if we're actually going to catch anything, but let's go. Bye, right. guys. Bye, guys. See you soon. Have fun. Have fun ah. yeah. While those two are off to Hosier Lane, we have a creepy fact for you. Take it away, Carl. Thank you. Did you know that Alfred Deacon was actually Frederick Bailey Beanie's lawyer? Yeah. Mm, yeah, not only that, researchers actually believe that he held a seance at the murder site to get in contact with Emily's spirit. Wow, I don't know how I feel about that as a Deacon Uni student. Well, however you feel about it, good, bad, we're off to Hosier Lane to check in on Joanne and McKeeley. We're here at Hosier Lane investigating the haunting of Frederick Bailey Deeming. So let's get exploring. Are you scared, McKeeley? Never. <laughs> Never. So, McKeeley's found a cold spot here in the alley. I feel it. As soon as I was walking down, I was like, that's different from the temperature that we were walking in. Let's go investigate. Yeah, I feel nothing. It's the same as, as always. everywhere else in the alley. You just gotta be, you just gotta look for it. You gotta feel it. Yeah, I gotta look something. for the warm air. Mm -hmm. Good advice, sound advice. So, we're gonna try to talk to the ghost on our microphone and see if we can get anything back. We're gonna ask three simple questions and hopefully we'll get a response. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Okay. Do you wanna have the honor of first question? I do. I've just gotta press the button. <laughs> Wait. Can you say our names back to us? My name is McKeeley. My name is Joanne. All right, let's have a look. Can you say our names back to us? My name is McKeeley. My name is Joanne. <laughs> wow, nothing. That could just be because there's straight noise. Time for our next question. Joanne, would you like to be honest? I gotcha. Can you tell us your name? Who are you? given him enough time to respond. Can you tell us your name? Who are you? All I heard was you, man. So I'm actually really curious, before we ask the ghost, do you believe that he's Jack the Ripper? I think so. I think after doing research for our show, I think there's a lot of evidence and I, you know, I think it's pretty close. I think it's pretty... I don't know, I call cap because I'm like, murderers and psychopaths, they want the attention. 
why wouldn't you claim to be the biggest serial killer of your time? Everyone's gonna know your name. I know, but the evidence is there. I just, after, I mean, the viewers will agree <laughs> after they see all the evidence. Why don't we ask the ghost, see what he has to say. Are you Jack the Ripper? I'm actually a little scared. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Did you hear that? I heard, <laughs> I heard a mumble. I swear I just heard that. You no, didn't hear that? Nothing. I heard a mumble. Play it, play it back on the edit and we'll hear it. Nothing. I heard a mumble. Do you believe you're scared now? I, I sort of want to get out of here. It's getting a bit cold now. I actually <laughs> feel the cold spot. I think we should go. Shut up. We are here ghost hunting alone again. Um, I thought it was a one and done thing, but apparently I'm back. Um, we've got our trusty EMF here, so let's see if anyone will answer. Is anyone there? Is anybody near us? Frederick Bailey Deeming. Well, I haven't heard anything back, so it looks like thankfully I am safe. Hopefully Joanne gets safe. There's bad here. Okay, that was unaccepted. What's bad here? It just said Pearl, and he used to steal, like, necklaces and jewellery for girls. Did he buy you pearls? Are you talking about pearl jewellery? Prove! What do you want us to prove? Frederick Bailey Deeming was the Ripper? Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? We've had a few interesting conversations with this entity and hopefully Joanne will be able to get more information out of it. So, thank you. So I'm in the same spot Makili was just at, and I'm gonna do my own ghost hunting experience. Let's see what I encounter. So I've got the EVP in my hands. Let's ask some questions. Hello, are you there? What's your name? Why did you kill your wife and your children? Are you actually Jack the Ripper? Look, I call cap in these sort of things. You point something at the sky, bada bing, bada boom, ghost. <laughs> yeah, I'm not encountering anything. Don't know what Makili was on about. So, do you still hear your mom? Is she still talking to you? Is she still saying stuff to you? You stole jewelry to give to women because you couldn't afford it yourself. <laughs> um, do you regret ever killing your wife and your children? If you didn't get caught, would you have done it again? Good. I don't believe in this kind of stuff. It was a tragedy what happened to his wife and to his children, but 
I don't think he's still here and he's still haunting. So we got some pretty interesting stuff here in Hosier Lane. This was great, but I think I'm done for the season. No. I don't think I'm, I don't think I can do any more ghost hunting. I'm, I'm shaking, like I can't. Can't do it anymore? I don't think so. Well, I don't care, come at me, ghost. Let's go to the next hunt. <laughs> How about we get back to the studio and discuss with the boys? Sounds good. While the girls are out hunting at Hoyser Lane, we're joined by Dr. Jeff Crawford, a founding researcher in the idea that Deeming and the Ripper are connected. He also worked multiple years at Pentridge Prison, where notable figures such as Ned Kelly and Deeming were buried. Cool. He's also a former academic at Melbourne University. Thanks for coming, Jeff. Thanks Thank very you. much. Hey. How you it's going? great to be here. So we have a few questions that our audience members are super excited to hear about. Uh, what got you into serial killers, <laughs> specifically Frederick Bailey Deeming? Um, yeah, Frederick Bailey Deeming was an interesting character. He, um, I came across him very early, just obscurely, and um, at the time I was interested in Jack the Ripper. I got interested mm -hmm. in Jack the Ripper because I went on a Jack the Ripper tour oh, yeah. in London with my wife, and they took us around the sites at night, and it was dark, and there were still working girls working on the streets, and mm. she ended up white as a ghost because they told us <laughs> all the gruesome details. And I got back to Melbourne, and one of my clients said, um, look, we're doing hypotheticals. Would you like to do a hypothetical? And I said, yeah, why not? I'll do one on Deeming oh. and Jack the Ripper. So I did the Jack the Ripper one. It uh, went over really well. I actually did it for primary school kids, which sounds a bit weird, but I took all the nasty bits yeah. out. It was just some ladies got stabbed on the street. Right. <laughs> and that's really how I got interested in Jack the Ripper, because to do those kind of things, I had to know a lot about him. Yeah. Um, and then later on, I made the connection with Deeming. I wouldn't say I'm a leading um, expert on Deeming. <laughs> I know where the leading expert of Deeming lives and I've met him oh. in Rainhill, just out of Liverpool. Yeah. Um, he's probably the world expert on Deeming mm. and we went to see where his wife and kids were buried and you know, all that sort of interesting stuff. So that's how I got into it really. Yeah. And still doing it, still doing talks at Provost Clubs about Jack the Ripper. Oh, beautiful. Which nice. is a great way to um, uh, plug my business. <laughs> Could you talk about some of the similarities between Jack the Ripper and Deeming? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously the first one is they're both serial killers. Right. And they both lived about the same time. And they were both psychopaths. And they both, uh, Jack the Ripper killed five women over a period of 71 days. And he killed them using a knife. He cut their throats. Mm. Uh, Deeming uh, killed his family, his wife and four kids. He wanted to be rid of them and he cut the throats of four of them and strangled oh. the other one. No idea wow. why. He then married um, Emily Mather, um, who was the daughter of the landlord of the place he was staying at at Rand Hill. Promptly mm. came to Australia, where he killed her within a few days of getting here, and he buried her under a half at Andrew Street, Windsor. Mm. And um, that's really how I kind of got into wrestling demon, yeah. because they're both psychopaths. And the other thing is, they were both um, the sort of person you meet in the street and you'd immediately trust them. Mm. You know, Jack the Ripper never caused a fuss. Um, I think if he approached a woman on the street and she put up any kind of resistance, he'd just say, okay, love, doesn't matter, off I'll go. Wow. And they trusted him, and they trusted him with their lives, and they lost the bet. Uh, Deeming was the same. He was a prof professional con man. He conned people out of property, out of money, out of diamonds, he did all sorts of things. Um, and I think um, this is why uh, I'm seeing that the two people starting to merge together. Yeah. Um, the one problem with Deeming is because he's a professional con man and had I don't know, 30 aliases or something, sometimes <laughs> it's hard to track him down in history. Yeah. But the Jack the Ripper murders were only over a period of 71 days. So we really only have to put Deeming in London for 71 days uh, during mm. 1888 to, um, um, to put the finger on him, really. Yeah. But the bottom line is, we'll never know. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, since you know you, you have so much experience with like prisoners from your French prison, uh, what was it like working there? Absolutely boring. <laughs> <laughs> the right. boringest job, is that a word? The boringest job I've ever had. Um, you see these prison movies and things, and there's all tension and stuff going on. Uh, generally, there isn't. Uh, most of the prisoners realise that if they want a reasonable life in prison, they toe the line. Oh, yeah. They do what they're told, yeah. and some of them get jobs, they're called billets, and the billets get extra things if they help out in the, uh, in the, in the divisions. Mm. Um, so most of the time, it was um, 
really boring. Yeah. Right. And while I was sitting there, I was thinking, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> this is so boring. And one day I might get stabbed. So I started studying up um, some chemistry texts and things from when I was at high school. I completely stuffed up um, matriculation, it was then called, now you call it BCE. Mm. And I thought, nah, that's it, I don't want to get into uni. So I studied up this stuff and I applied as a mature age student at the age of 26. Wow. And I was accepted. And um, I went to Monash. I was there at Monash for eight years, walked in with nothing and walked out with a Bachelor of Science of Honours and a PhD. Nice. Right. The bottom line is Pentridge rehabilitated me. <laughs> rehabilitated me. Not, not some of the criminals, but me. You know, got me out of this boring, horrible environment mm -hmm. and um, got some degrees and off I went. Microbiology, senior lecturer, um, all those kind of things. Wow. And uh, absolutely loved it. Could you tell us a bit about how new technologies have uh, made it easier to investigate these murders? Absolutely. Um, it's obvious, isn't it? Um, there was a French um, forensic scientist called, um, I've just written it down here somewhere, Edmond Lacaro, I think his name was, and he said every contact leaves its trace. So if I put my finger on that table, I've picked up some stuff off the table mm. and I've left some of my stuff on there. And of course fingerprints came in, and more latterly, DNA, and um, fibre analysis and glass analysis and of course there's cameras all over our cities now. You can't go anywhere, I'm sure. I was picked up on six cameras walking in here with my machine gun <laughs> and um, you can be picked up. So it's much easier uh, to solve a crime these days. Still we've got some that, that have missed out. Um, but when we think back to Jack the Ripper's times in 1888 between August and November, uh, we might think, oh, the police sat in their hands, they're pretty useless. They weren't. Yeah. They did amazing things. They, um, they tried um, using uh, bloodhounds, tracking mm. down from the scene of a crime. That didn't work. They dressed themselves up as women and hung mm. around on street corners, seeing if they could get a customer who might yeah. be Jack the Ripper. <laughs> yeah. they, um, they would block off a whole street and they would go through the whole street and they'd interview everyone in the street. So what they're looking for, intelligence, information, they'd put it together to form pictures. Uh, they did all that, lots of overtime, and unfortunately they never caught him. And I think yeah. that's why we talk about him now. If they caught, caught him and he was like a greengrocer, who'd care these days? Yeah. But he was never caught and um, sort of a charismatic figure. Uh, although, in Australian parlance, he was absolute mongrel. Uh, <laughs> but we do it. We generally do it now. Sometimes there's some crimes that don't get solved for years and years. Um, but DNA uh, tends to do it for us. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving your time and telling us these stories. Yeah, it's absolutely. been amazing. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Hey, guys. Hey, look hey. Back. Hey. hey, how are you guys? How was it? How was Hosier Lane? Cold. <laughs> well, as soon as we got there, before we even started rolling, we were testing with the EVP mm -hmm. and we got the words kill and one lady. Oh, but see, I don't know if I believe it because I feel like kill is a very popular word for the, these sort of machines to pick well, up. Well, mm. believe it or not, I don't want to go back to Hosea Lane after seeing that. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I guess that wraps it up for this episode. And this season overall. I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight because I'm going to miss this. Aww. Aww. Well, we'd like to thank everyone at home for supporting us and the show. We're extremely grateful and we couldn't have done it without you, the audience at home. And we also want to thank the amazing crew behind the camera. Without you guys, this show wouldn't be possible. Mm. Thank you all for venturing into the night with us. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.